So this is the Pixel 6 Pro versus the Pixel 7 Pro. If you have this phone right now, should you consider upgrading? Or if you're potentially maybe comparing the two, should you get last year's or should you get the newest one? Let's go ahead and talk about it. So as far as the design, it's definitely gonna be up to you to decide which camera array you think looks nicer, but that is where you're gonna see the biggest difference where the camera array on the Pixel 7 Pro now has a frame versus the Pixel 6 Pro just had a big glass black bar. For me personally, I like the frame look, but I will say that you definitely should get a case or a minimum maybe a skin to attach onto the frame because after some days I was starting to see a couple of scratches just because I wasn't using a case so I was constantly putting it down on the table and potentially scratching it up. On the Pixel 6 Pro I do have a couple of dinks on the actual silver part of the frame and the Pixel 6 Pro also doesn't connect seamlessly. Well I guess it kind of does but it, you can see there's a little bit of a disconnect just because of the color change. The black bar to the silver glossy frame both of them are glossy with their frame and glossy with their glass. So it's a shiny looking display or shiny looking back to it, which is, I believe, is some form of Corning Gorilla Glass Victus. So they both are somewhat slippery, but they are both pretty comfortable in the hand, in my opinion. They're very soft feeling and curved, so they feel very nice, in my opinion, compared to other devices that feel a little bit sharp. The power button and the volume lock are also lower, which is so much nicer to be able to reach it with one hand. And the buttons are also clickier. I felt that pixel 6 pro buttons were very clunky feeling like they didn't feel nice when you click them in my opinion the buttons on the pixel 7 pro feel so much nicer both of them have USB-C at the bottom with the dual firing speakers. And honestly, I couldn't really tell much of a difference between the two speakers. I honestly think they both sound pretty good and equally about the same. There might be some small subtle differences, but I'm not an audiophile. So to me, for listening to music or watching videos, they're both perfectly fine. And they're both fully IP68, which means they're water resistant and they're dust resistant. So if you get splashed with some water, you'll be fine on either or. As far as the displays, you are going to be getting a 1440p, 120Hz, Quad HD, AMOLED, 6.7 inch display. Basically what that means is that both of them are honestly going to look very good as far as like color and sharpness. I personally use the boosted and adaptive modes, either or, and we're watching content. I think things look really good. So just you know, doing my everyday thing for browsing content, watching videos. They all look very sharp in my opinion. And same thing with browsing just content, doing my normal thing, playing games and whatever. I honestly think both of them are very smooth when it comes to just general use with the 120 hertz. Also with animations, the only time the animations I think could be improved when it comes to like looking smoother is the unlocking of the notifications. So I'll get to how that works, but basically when I'm using facial recognition to unlock my device to see my notifications, I feel like the animations could be a little bit nicer and smoother because they seem a little bit too fast. Like they're just too aggressive in my opinion. But besides that, I think the phone overall, both phones in my opinion, overall are very smooth, especially after some updates on the Pixel 6 Pro. It's definitely gotten a lot smoother. The Pixel 7 Pro display also gets brighter, which is nicer. So when you're outside, it definitely looks much brighter than the Pixel 6 Pro. So that was definitely one of the weaknesses of the Pixel 6 Pro's display. It wasn't as bright as the competition's displays. And now the Pixel 7 Pro's may not still not be at the top level of the competition, but it's definitely an improvement over the Pixel 6 Pro. And both displays are curved. So if you're not a fan of curved displays, you might not like either or, but at least on the Pixel 7 Pro's display, it's a little bit less curved. So you feel it just a little bit less and you notice it a little bit less. I honestly don't have an issue with uh, accidental touches of the palm on these devices, personally, because I use cases. So if you're not a fan of them, just use a case. Honestly, it'll just get rid of any accidental touches you might have. As far as the intrusions and whatnot, the bezels, I think there might've been some improvement, but really I didn't notice much of a difference I honestly think they both have pretty small bezels and on the bottom the chins are just about the same size so they're bigger compared to the other bezels of the phone itself and the, the cutout both of them are pretty much the same size but at least with this new camera cutout you do have the ability to use facial recognition now so getting into these biometrics you have facial recognition and you have the fingerprint sensor on the Pixel 7 Pro versus only a fingerprint sensor on the Pixel 6 Pro so Compared to that, I honestly think that the Pixel 7 Pro automatically takes the win. But on top of that, the fingerprint sensor is much better compared to last year's Pixel 6 Pros. The Pixel 6 Pros definitely got better over time with some updates, but it's just the fact that it took time to get there. And even then, it's not at the same level as the Pixel 7 Pros. Definitely, for the most part, pretty fast and reliable, but the Pixel 7 Pros is just 
ever so slightly better, a little bit faster, a little bit easier to use, even with some slow, or I should say fast touches. I don't usually recognize you. If you're going too fast and just barely touch the screen, yeah, it's gonna miss you, but usually for the most part, I have like no issue with it. And now with facial recognition, I think this is a complete package. So facial recognition may not be the most secure, but it's so convenient. So the way I use it is that I have it set so that my notifications are locked until I'm recognized. So once it sees my face, it'll unlock my notifications. You have the option of just going right into the device once it recognizes your face. But personally, that's what I use the fingerprint sensor for and I like to keep my notifications locked, similar to how I use it on the iPhone where, where once Face ID recognizes you, it just unlocks your notifications. That's the same way I use it on the Pixel 7 Pro. As far as the performance, it's going to be the second generation Google Tensor chip on the Pixel 7 Pro versus the Pixel 6 Pro's first generation Google Tensor chip, and both of them will have 12 gigabytes of RAM. So basically what that means is that both of them honestly will give you pretty decent performance and for your everyday tasks, everyday activities, which for me is just literally browsing the internet, checking social media, browsing YouTube and stuff like that, and that's the extent usually, emails, you know, texting every once in a while, but it's nothing crazy. Um, occasionally, I will do some heavy tasks, which is playing a game every once in a while when I have a chance. So even then, for the most part, I would say both of them can handle it, but it's just the fact that the Pixel 6 Pro will still continuously start to get warm faster and also feel a little bit warmer. Versus the Pixel 7 Pro, they've definitely improved, I think, the heat management here where the Pixel 7 Pro doesn't feel to get as hot and also doesn't warm up as faster. It definitely will warm up after some time, but I find it confusing and hard to pinpoint when exactly it starts to warm up. So one time I was just using the camera pretty extensively for a long period, and I felt like it didn't really get that warm. And then one time I was just browsing around my doing my daily activities, checked the camera, took a quick photo here and there, and it felt like it was getting a little bit warm. So I don't know why it, it sometimes it gets warm and sometimes it doesn't, but it's again, not to the point where it you know feels too hot to the touch. I wouldn't say the Pixel 6 Pro also gets too hot to the touch, but it definitely can feel warm in my opinion. But at the end of the day, I would still say that the Pixel 7 Pro is definitely an improvement in both the performance and just the heat management, which is a great because Pixel 6 Pro, that was the one thing that was one of the uh, negatives that I kept complaining about, just the fact that it always got warm. So that's definitely an improvement from the Pixel 6 Pro to the Pixel 7 Pro. As far as the software, out of the box, the Pixel 7 Pro definitely is much better than the Pixel 6 Pro was last year. I didn't experience too many bugs on the Pixel 6 Pro when it first came out, but I did encounter a few things here and there, and that just seemed to be the, the main thing that everyone wanted to do, just like trash on the Pixel 6 Pro. Some people had terrible experiences, some people had uh, really good experiences, and I was kind of like more on the good experience, but kind of neutral in the way, or in the middle, I should say, because I did, I did experience a couple bugs here and there. On the Pixel 7 Pro, I haven't really come across anything crazy or just bad at a point where it makes me want to switch. If anything, it's making me want to switch full time now to the Pixel 7 Pro, because the software experience, well, it's still limited to other Android devices, and I won't even compare it to iOS, don't even bother with that. But even though it's a little bit limited to the customization features, I feel like it's one of the smoothest and cleanest software experiences that Android has to offer. Seriously, it's so smooth. The animations are super clean, except for, of course, lock screen once. But besides that, it runs and feels really good. The features that you do have, you do have Material U on both of them, so you can change up the colors based on your wallpaper. You also have a ton of Google AI features. These, if you've never used them before, Trust me, you got to use them because once you use them, you're not going to go back to any other device. The spam calling thing is the number one feature that I absolutely love. The fact that the Google Assistant will answer for you and you no longer have to worry about spam calls is amazing. I feel bad for some people because I also have it set up for new callers that I don't have in my contacts. So if they call me, the Google Assistant is going to pick up for me and maybe I'll be, miss I'll be missing some like important calls, but honestly, I don't have you in my contacts and I don't want to hear from you. So yeah, I think this is awesome with the Google Assistant with those AI features. You also have a ton of other stuff such as dictation and translation. Don't use those in my day to day, but they're also there if you happen to like using that kind of features. And both of them have those features. It's not going to be one over the other. Both of them have those same AI features and dictation features. And the only difference when it came to the software was in the camera UI. 
just a tad bit different than I noticed. One being the dial, it's different. I wasn't a huge fan of either because you have to wait until the dial is done setting itself. You can't quickly change between different focal lengths and switch between like 5X and 10X really quickly. If you start to scroll, I don't know, it, it looks different. Not a fan of either of them. Um, you also have the ability now to see your resolution, I believe. So before you start filming a video, you can actually see which re resolution is set before your video. But as far as the actual cameras and taking the photos and videos, how they look, the quality of them on the front, honestly, I think the Pixel 7 Pro is just a tad bit better with the skin color and more different lighting conditions or situations. I felt like the Pixel 7 Pro was better at, re at representing my skin color over the Pixel 6 Pro. Same thing with video, I felt like, again, the skin color was just a bit better and a little bit, maybe a little bit more detailed on the Pixel 7 Pro. Uh, but honestly, both of them do look pretty good overall and there's not a huge difference. As far as the cameras in the back, there is a bit of a difference. Starting off the ultra wide, it's now a 0.5X, which it, I think is very nice because that's the whole point of an ultra wide, right? To take a wide field of view. So you get a 0.5X versus what, a 0.7X. So much better there and you get better focus so you can get closer to a subject and get like a max like shot and in fact it does auto switch to that setting so if you get close to a subject it'll know that you're trying to get a macro like shot so it'll switch to that settings and that uh, camera lens as far as the color though I think the ultra wide and the wide itself both look very similar to each other so the pixel 6 pro and the pixel 7 pro both take slightly vibrant photos so to add a little bit more color to it I want to say that the pixel 7 pro depending on what situation you're in sometimes looks a little bit more vibrant and I wouldn't say unrealistic, but just the hair extra vibrant. It's up to you to decide if you like that or not. I think depending on the situation of what I'm taking a photo of, it may look nicer, honestly. But again, for the most part, both of them look very sharp and detailed and just overall good when it comes to the wide camera and the ultra wide. Both of them look very similar. The telephotos are also different where the Pixel 7 Pro has a 5X versus a 4X on the Pixel 6 Pro. That being a max zoom of 30X on the Pixel 7 Pro and then a max zoom of about 20X on the Pixel 6 Pro. But you can also notice that the Pixel 7 Pro's color is more of a blue tint versus the Pixel 6 Pro is more on the warmer side. As far as the detail though, I would say maybe it's about the same. I kind of prefer the photos of the Pixel 6 Pro style of photo just because of the color. I'm not a huge fan of the blue tint on the Pixel 7 Pro. I'm not sure why it's making it more of a cooler slash bluish tint, but I did notice that difference there. As far as video, it's gonna be the same story as photos where the ultra wide is again wider. So when you're in a, I guess, landscape, you'll get a wider field of view. And you'll also notice that when you get closer to a subject, you can get a more macro like shot with that ultra wide. And the color and the, the quality, I felt like both looked for the most part the same. I think the Pixel 6 Pro looked a little hazy. I think that might've been because I might've smudged it a little bit when I was taking a video or before I took a video. So. I don't know if that's actually the lens doing that or if that was just a smudge on the actual lens and I didn't notice it until after the fact. The wides on both of them, similar to photos. I, it was hard to tell which one was which and that means that both of them were honestly pretty good. There might have been a little bit of a touch of a difference again where the Pixel 7 Pro might have been just a hair more vibrant or different in the color. But for the most part, both of them will be giving you pretty good quality 4K video and good color. I think both of them look pretty good. And once again, when you switch to the telephoto, both of them still have that jarring effect that when you switch from the wide to the telephoto, there's like a weird second delay before it actually switches to the actual telephoto. And again, you can see the color is different on both of them where the Pixel 7 Pro is more on the cooler side with a blue tint look to it versus the Pixel 6 Pro is more on the warmer slash, I guess, natural side of the color spectrum, I guess. But I think, again, the Pixel 6 Pro's color looks a little bit nicer compared to that cooler tint on the Pixel 7 Pro but you can zoom in to 5X naturally on the telephoto versus just 4X on the telephoto of the Pixel 6 Pro. And both of them cap out at 20X, so at, at a max zoom, uh, not much of a difference. I think you can see a little bit of a difference in detail maybe on the Pixel 7 Pro, but not huge in difference in my opinion. So at the end of the day, with cameras, there definitely is an improvement on the Pixel 7 Pro and both the ultra wide and potentially the telephoto. The only thing I don't like about it is again, that cooler tint. Not sure why it's doing that, but 
Besides that, I definitely think there's been an improvement in the cameras on the Pixel 7 Pro compared to the Pixel 6 Pro. It's not a bad camera on the Pixel 6 Pro. Like, no, by no means at all it's, is it a bad camera. It's just they definitely refined it a little bit more. As far as battery life, both of them have a 5,000 mAh battery. And in everyday usage, with my experience, I felt like the Pixel 6 Pro was getting me just about a day. But if I was using it pretty heavily, and if I especially had the always on display on, it would definitely die by the afternoon, about maybe 7 or 8 p.m. with maybe 2 to 4 hours screen on time, depending on what I was doing that day. And with the Pixel 7 Pro, I'm able to get this to last me a whole day or maybe even a whole 24-hour cycle. So... I'm getting, again, similar hours of screen on time, so I'll unplug it in the morning around 6 a.m. and have to plug it back in maybe around 9 or 10. Or if I charge in the morning, say like around 9, I won't have to charge again until the next day around 8 or 9. So I think battery life has been a bit of an improvement on the Pixel 7 Pro over the Pixel 6 Pro, which I think is pretty good. But as far as the charging speeds, there was like no improvement here. Both of them still take about an hour and like 45 minutes or so, maybe an hour and 30 minutes. The fast charging is not fast at all. It's still pretty rough. And you also have wireless charging and reverse wireless charging on both of them. And the adaptive charging, I think might work if you're using an actual cable or if you're using a pixel stand. But when I'm using a regular G wireless charger, in this case, my Trio wireless charger by Samsung, Adaptive charging just does not work with them. <laughs> it just sucks major ass with them because I will wake up in the morning and I'll find that both of them either or will be at like maybe 70%, sometimes 30% or not even charged at all um, if I left them charging on the wireless charger with adaptive charging turned on. But if you have the appropriate cable or wireless charger, then adaptive charging might be pretty good. But at the end of the day, if you have the Pixel 6 Pro, should you upgrade to the Pixel 7 Pro? If you had a terrible experience with the software or the hardware on a Pixel 6 Pro, then yeah, this is gonna be an actual functioning great phone here compared to the last year's generation. But if you have a Pixel 6 Pro now and it's been a great experience, you haven't had much if any issues at all, then I would wait. I would wait till next year because then you'll see a better improvement for yourself. But if at any point you start to experience something rough, then I wouldn't hesitate to switch to the Pixel 7 Pro because it's been a much better experience overall. And that goes with like trying to decide between them. So if you're trying to decide between them, try and get the Pixel 7 Pro. Definitely go for this version first. And if you can't find it or if it's way, way, way too expensive, then maybe consider a Pixel 7. But I guess you could try a Pixel 6 Pro at a very cheap price, um, but otherwise, I would get the Pixel 7 or try and get the Pixel 7 Pro over this. But besides that, that's been it. Hope you guys enjoyed and peace.